In this third video, we're going to be addressing some more ways to modify this image and how to work with some objects in Inkscape. So first off, I want to talk about um, this image in general. So um, basically, this is one complete image. So this whole thing is joined together at the current moment. Now, let's say for this in instance, this image came in in two parts. Say there was a, a deer head here and maybe a, a tree in the background that was separate from it. Even though they're separate from each other, let's say maybe there might have been some lettering down here. Even if it, though it's separate, it's still linked all together into one. And so you can't just select part of the image and say just get rid of it. So as an example, if I come down here and set my uh, stroke to, let's say I'm going to set it to, uh, I'm going to set the fill to black. So we go back to the black and white. I'll close out that. Basically, so now um, everything's joined together. Let's say, for instance, I wanted to just get rid of this little white mark right here. I didn't want that. Or maybe this one right here. I wanted to fill that in black. Well, I could go through and delete all the nodes in the line and get rid of it. That would be very uh, tiresome. Or I can just select this section here. But to do that, I have to break this image apart. So to do that, I have to go, I have to have it selected, I have to go to path, and I have to go to break apart. Now when I break this image apart, every part of this image is going to get the fill. So the whole thing will turn black. Okay, you can see the kind of outlines of the different interior shapes in there, but you can't really work with them that well. And so that's why it's very helpful at this point to eliminate the fill and just go off the outline. Okay. So once I've done that, I can then come in here and just modify this image, this part of this image. You know, I could select that and I could I could shrink it, I could grow it, widen it, stretch it, modify it, um, you know, go and select the individual nodes and modify those just as I would normally. Um, or I could simply select it, right click, and get rid of it. And, and now I've cut it out and filled it in. Um, now, when I zoom back out, at this time, I would probably want to select the whole thing and then go back, path, and then combine and join it back together so it's all one object again. And again, I can set the fill back to black. Okay, so that's using the break part and the combine. Okay, so now I want to talk a little bit about objects. Anytime I say draw a square, use a rectangle or square tool or the circle tool or these stars or polygon tools or for that matter do lettering, anytime I do anything like that, if I just draw a box down here. Okay. That box by default does not have a path around it. And you can tell that by looking down at the bottom, okay, of uh, Inkscape, you will see it says rectangle down at the bottom here. Now, if that had a path around it, it would tell you how many nodes there were. For an example, if I click on the, the, the deer, you'll notice it says path, 492 nodes, okay? So this is just a rectangle, does not have a path around it. If I were to save this image as a DXF, this box wouldn't show up, okay? Because there's no line around it. So the first thing I need to do with this is to put a path around it. To do that, I have it selected, and I can go up to Path, and then Object to Path. Now, I have a path around my object. I have four nodes down here, okay? So that path 
it is now joinable. I could union in that path to the deer if I wanted to. Okay, so let's do that. I'm gonna make a, a welcome sign here. So if I select my box or draw a box around the whole thing, I can just go path, union. And now it's joined together. Okay, so now for this welcome sign, I'm gonna cut out a section here inside this box. Now to do that, I'm going to draw another rectangle inside this one. Now there's a couple ways I can do this. Um, I could turn off my fill so I could see this really easy or I could um, simply come in and set my oops, my fill color. Let me go up here. I didn't want to do that. Undo that. I can create a box and set my fill color for that box to white. And now I can drag a box in here. Okay, so let's say I'm going to put that box right in the center here. This is going to be the frame for my lettering. And we'll discuss other ways to more precisely position and measure this. For right now, we're just eyeballing. So, as usual, this box does not have a path around it. It is a rectangle. So with it selected, I go path, and then I go object to path. Okay. So currently I have a white box laying on top of a um, my deer and other box joined together. So this box isn't empty. It's 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 not hollow necessarily. Okay, um, so to, in order to, uh, what I want to do is cut this box out of this image to make that frame work. So to do that, as before, I'm going to select both images, both the box and my deer image with this frame. And then this time I'm going to go path and I'm going to go difference. And that's going to cut that box out of the deer and background frame. So now if I move this up, that box is hollow. Okay. Um, one important note about the difference in reference compared to the union. With the union you can select as many images you want, um, as many uh, sets of lines and join them all at the same time. With the difference you can only do two at a time, for example. So if there was more things I wanted to cut out, I would have done each individual one, one at a time, okay? So let's put some lettering in here. So I could just click on my letter tool and I can pick any font I want, okay? Um, and it could be any font that's on my computer basically. Okay, now let me modify this stroke, my fill. There's a fill color of white. I don't want that. And so back to the letters. And then I'm going to drag that up. So I'm just going to scale that up and pull it down so it's anchored on the bottom of that frame. And so this is going to be my lettering for my welcome sign. Okay, so as it is, just with the original boxes we drew, this text does not have a path around it. It is text. So the first thing I have to do, I go to path and then object the path. Now. I have a group of seven objects. Now, one thing about a group is you cannot union a group to something. So the first thing I have to do with this lettering is to ungroup it. So with it selected, I will go to Object and down to Ungroup. Now they're all broken apart individually. I can move them around if I wanted to. 
click on each individual one but I don't want to with them all selected I'm going to draw a box around my entire object and I'm going to go path union and join it all together and so now it's all joined together into one big sign okay if I was done I was happy with it all I have to do is make sure I'm scaled right so I'm 27 high and 16 wide you know I could I could drag it up a little bit make it a little bit bigger so about 30 high 18 wide that's gonna be a hell of a nice welcome sign if I was happy with that all I have to do is go file save as and change the name to save it as a DXF same as before make sure your base units are inches they'll stay unit the units will stay at inches once you change them the first time okay don't remember what you did last So now, just to show you, I could save that to a flash drive, bring it out to the machine, go down, import the drawing, and there's my sign, ready to cut out. Um, simple as that. Close that. So um, basically, that's the important thing about working with objects is that you want to make sure you put a path around them, and you want to make sure that the uh, you know, lettering has a path. Um, and that's how you do. We talked about the union and the difference in this video. So these are really the basic key tools in for creating plasma cut custom images. I could bring in as many uh, pictures if I wanted to. I could go on to Google and find an image of a tree and add it in right here behind the, the deer or maybe uh, you name it, whatever, whatever you want, I can add it into this image and combine multiple images into one. So, um, you know, with a little creativity, you can see how that could get, you can make some really nice custom sign work, really nice custom artwork for customers with very little um, effort on your part. In fact, you know, it becomes easy once you get familiar with these tools to modify an image so a customer can easily make a custom image for them. So one last thing I want to mention is... Um, Essentially, they're pages, or, or would be commonly referred to as layers. Um, it's done in, in the order in which things are drawn in Inkscape. Um, currently, the deer is the original image, and so it's down on the bottom. It's on the, the lowest layer. So everything I draw ends up being on top of it. And I can show that by just drawing a little square. I'm going to change the color to red. Okay. Oops, I didn't want to change that. I have to make sure I don't have the deer selected when I do that. So if I change the color of my square to red, and I just draw a square. You can see the square is on top of the deer. Okay. Now, if I wanted to make that, swap that, and put the deer on top of the square, what I could do is select the deer, okay, and then use the raise up, raise selection up. So I can raise it up one, or I can raise it all the way to the top. In this case, I'm gonna raise it all the way to the top. And so now, the red square is in the background, okay? So um, that's sometimes confusing for folks uh, when um, for some reason you know they have they bring an image in later and they want to do lettering on it 
for instance, uh, let me cut this out here. Um, if I bring some lettering in, okay, and let's say I want to cut some lettering out of uh, this animal here uh, in the, the chest area. I want to put the maybe the um, the address number here. So click into my letter mode, and I'm going to write some uh, some numbers. Okay. So I dragged it over. Well, you can't really see it. Okay. So currently, since I drew this last, my letters are on top of the deer. However, if I move the deer up to the very top, now the letters are underneath the deer. If I change the color of the letters, say to red, just so I could see them easier, they are underneath the deer. Okay. However, if I move the letters up, now they're on top of the deer, okay? So whatever, the color really doesn't matter for us since we're not worrying about it. Um, but if I wanted to say cut these letters out right here, there's no reason I can't do that, okay? It doesn't matter the color I have them set to. Uh, but the first thing I would need to do is put a path around these letters. I'd have to go... Select them, and then go object to path. Now they have a path. Next, I have to ungroup them. So with them selected, I go object, ungroup. Now, instead of doing a union, I'm going to do a difference. As I said before, when I do a difference, I have to do one at a time. So I'll select the two, select the rest of the deer, path, difference. Now it's cut out. Same thing, we'll do the, the six. Rest of the deer, difference, and I can keep doing that until they're all cut out. So my letters are cut out. If I zoom in there, I'd have to make sure my six, center my six stayed in place and the four. Um, one way I would commonly do that with uh, letters like this, I could draw a little rectangle here. Okay. And you know that letter, that rectangle could be red, it could be black. Um, just for this purposes, I'll set it to black for right now. As before. Make sure I put a path around that rectangle. And then I'm going to union together. And now my four is going to stay in place. I can do the same thing with the six. This is a great solution for when you want to use a font that is not a stencil font. Okay, Most fonts aren't stencil fonts, but little practice, not too difficult for you to come in and adjust your, your letters so that they stay together. Okay. I'm going to put a path around it, select the rest of it, and then go Union. And so, now that was, I could have moved that over a little bit. You can see it kind of but you get the point. We're holding the center of the six in place, holding the center of the four in place. The rest of the letters are going to cut out just fine. So that zoomed out. Um, my image is done. And um, I'm, like I said, ready to save as a DXF, ready to cut it out. So um, that's it for this video. Um, continue on in the series if you want to learn a little bit more about some of the uh, ways to modify and edit images.